<laughs> All right, it is 5.02 p.m. and I'm calling the Finance Committee meeting to order on October 13th, 2021. Um, our first order of business beyond being called to order is to review previous minutes. Ben? How can we approve them? A second. Got a chance to read them. <laughs> I'll second that. Any discussion? If anybody's about to need typos, it's because I guess I, I did not do my customary proofreading after the meeting. <laughs> Really, how come your name's on there? My name what? Is on there. On the board. On the board. Oh, because I'm logged in. Right here. So I can share my screen when we get to the financial okay. indicators okay. piece. Good reading. Oh, I forget to ask. Yep. Somebody's impersonating me, huh? From home? I just... Okay. Has everybody read the minutes? At the same time. I've perfected it. Everybody read the minutes? Yeah. Any discussion? No. Nope. No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have roll Sammy. call. Yeah. John Petrork, aye. John Pareski, aye. Sheila Chalfin, aye. James Cambia, aye. Skip Olmstead, aye. All right. That passes. One, two, three, four, five, zero, zero. Yeah, they don't have any members remotely. We don't. I asked I don't that once before. I think you have before. to have a roll call vote. Okay. Right, but since it's a hybrid, you still have to do the roll call vote. That's what I was told. You do? That's what yeah. I was told. Um, I got an email from Alice. She's on the way. She'll be a little late. Oh, okay. Great. Good. I mean, not good that she'll be late, but good that she's coming. Excellent. All right. <coughs> the next. <coughs> she, how late? It, it would be really nice if she were here for the next order of business. Um, mm -hmm. I'll stall for a second. So upcoming meetings next Tuesday the 19th is that the library discussion. Did everybody get an invitation to that? It's um, remote only. You have to RSVP um, and it's Tuesday the 19th at 7 p.m. You're looking like you didn't get an invite. Oh, it's remote only. I don't know if I got an invite. I checked my emails probably twice a month. That's it. I got an invitation by email. Um, from I, did. I did not, but I, I was told that they left me off. That was okay. I don't care. Okay. I can still participate. I'm sure you're devastated not to participate in yet another evening meeting. But <laughs> <laughs> you can't go on. But you're probably. Um, Why is that one remote? I don't know. Probably because of the size, I'm guessing. The library yeah. trustees really like it. The, the, the library trustees really, really like it. There's over 200 people there, and you're saying that we can't have a meeting. There's something wrong with that. Well, maybe because it would have to be held here and there isn't enough. I don't know. I, I don't know the reason. There's, a, I'm there's, just an, ele there's an elementary school with big enough to hold a couple hundred. Yeah. And that could have been the library's choice. Who knows? They've become accustomed to having all their meetings remotely. Maybe what we ought to do is have a meeting and invite them to come. Well, we could do that. Yes, we But we're not going to do it next Tuesday at 7 p.m. So, <laughs> um, and then the ATFD, which stands for something to do with Finance Committee, something Town Finance, Association of Town Finance Committee. Right. Um, has it the webinars? It's a series of three webinars. They start next Thursday, the 21st, and it'll be three Thursdays sequentially at 7 p.m. Um, we, Deerfield, is a member of the ACFC, so we get the member rate. It's $25. Um, you sign up online, and then I, I paid Julie's bill because it, it was, uh, <coughs> I was able to put it through this warrant, so. Okay. Because 
she did sign up. If anybody else wants to, um, your preferred way is for us to sign up, and in the process of signing up, you can choose to pay later. So you choose to pay later, and then you tell Brenda that you did that, and she'll pay it for you. Anyone yeah, they actually sent me a notice, and you sent me the, the information okay. Okay. I got it from two sources. We we have in the past used town credit card, not necessarily for this, but you probably could, possibly through Casey. Um, and then the third thing I wrote down is um, something called the Connecting Community Initiative. Um, which was briefed at the select board meeting last night, um, which is basically, I didn't, I didn't think through how to explain it. It's a, a, a council of councils, sort of. It's a meeting where they're asking a representative from each committee to come. And the goal, I think, is to set priorities for the town. Um, specifically relating right now to buildings and um, finances and how we're going to pay for, how we decide what the priority is and how we decide where we want to direct our finances, I think. When is that? Uh, huh? Is that a specific meeting or a series? So it will be a series of meetings. Um, there is no schedule yet, um, but it, I guess it's coming. And we will be, you know, as they get this um, initiative together. So they briefed the initiative last night, and it was the select board. This is my take on it. You can watch the meeting or see the minutes. But um, the select board approved this Connecting Community Initiative um, they have asked Denise Mason and Lily Dwight to basically contact all the committees and sort of go through the process of recruiting people and set up the first meeting. Um, anybody have anything? Um, questions or comments? Okay. <coughs> I'm definitely interested in us finance committee having a representative on that. Um, I am happy to be that representative depending on how many meetings there are, but we can uh, get that out to you. Once so would you later. like a motion to appoint you? I suppose, if you want to. Motion to appoint Judy Calfon as the point of contact for whatever this committee is. CCI. Connecting Communities Initiative. Initiative, yes. Yeah. We're trying to pick up federal funders where we're trying to do this all of nothing. Well, I think it's to deal with the fact that the, a lot of the committees in the town don't talk to each other enough. <laughs> you know. Well, anyway, I made a motion to appoint you. Second. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? I think you'll do a great job. Okay, second half. Okay. I'm sure you will. Right. Um, why don't we do our roll call vote then? Okay, um, John Petrick, aye. John Pereski, aye. Lou Chalfin, aye. Uh, Allison Vanderbilt and must abstain because I was late. <laughs> James Cambius, aye. Skip Olmstead, aye. All right, so that's a five zero one. All right, um, so our next order of business is to talk about the role of the finance committee. Um, and so the question is, should the finance committee review all aspects of all municipal questions that go before the town, or should we review all municipal questions that go before the town to determine the financial impact of such questions? So we have handouts that are, um, first one, this is um, Mass General Law, Chapter 39, Section 16, which talks about finance committees. 
That's where it has the role of finance committee. And then on the back of that is the entire bylaw from town of Deerfield um, on finance committees and section 10.5 of that talks about duties of the committee. So in both of those, it says that the finance committee shall consider any or all municipal questions for the purpose of making reports and recommendations to the town. Um, and then the other piece of the hand. Do you want to talk okay. about that and piece first because it is sort of a separate piece? Uh, um, let's do, now, let me say what, uh, what else is in front of you paperwork wise and then we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. So the other thing I handed out, this is the, an excerpt from the um, finance committee handbook from the Association of Town Finance Committees, and it talks about the role of the finance committee. Um, I handed this out, but it's not, it, I actually don't think it's all that helpful to this discussion, because what it talks about is who in the town is responsible for coming up with the budget. Um, but it, it's worth reading through at some point to see. Um, and then the- So what's your interpretation on that? Who's responsible for that? Finance committee. Um, yeah. But in our town, the selectmen take charge of that. Well, did you, it's in, prepared in collaboration with the, the board of? Department heads. Yeah. Well, the department heads report to the selectmen. They request the budget. They request the budget, but it's supposed to be coming to us, but it doesn't. We get it secondhand. Mm -hmm. Or we may get it co-equal if we're lucky. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to hold that thought and talk about the first question, which is what is the scope of um, things that we should talk about? Oh, and then Skip handed out this other, this last piece, um, Skip handed out the top one is the same thing as chapter 39, section 16, which is the same as this, um, which talks about the role of the finance committee. And then chapter 40, section six also talks about the finance committee's role um, but specifically with respect to the um, reserve sure. fund. Okay. So, back to the original question, which is should we consider all parts of everything or should we consider all parts of everything as they relate to financial matters? Um, Skip, you have an opinion. You said you wanted to say something. Oh. Well, I think you can see what my position is and has been, and in fact, it's state law. Very simple. Finance Committee shall consider any or all municipal questions for the purpose of making reports or recommendations to the town. It doesn't say we may, it says we shall. Shall is mandatory. Shall is mandatory, period. No if, ands, or buts. Uh, if Dan's out there, I would be interested in having Dan's uh, four cents worth inflation. Um, good evening, everybody. I, 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 can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my, my, you know, I, I'm speaking as a lay person, <laughs> as a moderator, not as an attorney, but I, I read it the same way. Um, it's, it does use the, the shall, and it does suggest that. It's everything that comes before the town, all municipal questions. So how you define what uh, what you should be discussing when you're looking at those, should that be focused on the financial impact and how deep into the financial impact do you go in terms of you know how far do you take it is, uh, I guess, more within the purview of the board and, and how your uh, presentation and credibility goes before the town meeting, you know, that those are all things you're gonna have to chart out yourself, but I, I don't see how you read the language and come to a significantly different conclusion. And if somebody does, I'd be happy to listen and maybe there's another way to read it, but it, I don't know if it was by design or accident, but the way it's, the, the way the Mass General Law reads, it's pretty clear, I think. I know. So I, I, my comment on this is I, I agree that the Finance Committee 
should con should consider everything. I think the reason this question is coming up is because um, there has been conflict uh, in the past or or disagreement about the the um, the, the sort of nature. Yeah, the nature of that discussion, um, and in my perspective and from my opinion, we are appointed by the moderator who is elected um, as a finance committee to prepare the budget. I, I feel like our primary focus should be on the finances, um, and I think that it makes sense for the finance committee to be the committee that determines if something impacts those finances, which is why everything shall come to the committee. I don't want somebody else deciding that this doesn't have a financial impact when we may think otherwise um, or think of something that is important. Um, and in the past, um, I have taken exception to almost what feels like maybe too much like carte blanche space for opinions that are not related to finance, I think it's okay to state them. Um, but when we harp, like if I, as a finance committee member, I'm harping on an opinion or a preference that I have that isn't related to finances, I am afforded a microphone and a, and a spot on this committee. And if it is something like, for instance, uh, I'll take one that wasn't really contentious for us, but the changing the language in the bylaws to be gender neutral, right? That one doesn't have a financial implication and it, it didn't, wasn't one that came up. But if I was, you know, full on against it because the select board should be select men and that's the way it's been, that's too much power to give my voice as a member of the, of the finance committee for that particular issue. Um, so I, I, that's, that's sort of my, my statement on it. Comment here. I, yeah, I, oh, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. Uh, I thought you were asking me if I had a comment, which I do, but no, no. I will let you have your comment first. And I'm, 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 I'm going to hang my hat on the word consider. Um, <clears throat> let's say that on the warrant there's an article for zoning and has no financial impact to say to this discussion. Like we, the one we, that had the reference to the wrong, the thing that was eliminated that we just had. Yeah. yeah. There's no financial. Yes. Yeah. But we could, to follow the state mandate, we could say we have considered the warrant article and we don't want to discuss it. We don't want to have any opinion on it. I agree. We go to the next one. And we I agree. met the state mandate. We've considered it. And it has no financial impact, so we're just going to move on. So I think that I, I agree with that. Um, I think that. I think that since we are named the finance committee, that the intent of the committee is to be the financial watchdog for the town. And I think that we are mandated to consider every question that comes, like you said, like everybody said, it, it says shall right in it. We're mandated to consider every question that comes before the town. Um, and I, I agree. I think we can consider it and decide that there's no financial impact and just say there, there's no financial impact. I also think that um, maybe you made the point that there are financial impact is pretty broad. So if, for example, I'm not, <laughs> I don't think that's wrong. Um, if there was, for example, a zoning bylaw or some other bylaw that was really poorly written and we think would cause us to have all sorts of um, get sued right and left, right? That would be a financial impact. I'm not saying, I don't, don't think that I'm saying that any of the bylaws that we've talked about have that in them. But if that were to happen, then I think we were totally in the purview of the Finance Committee to have that discussion. Um, I think it's reasonable, and this is a proposal I'm making up right now in this moment to kind of hear what the committee thinks about it. Um, I think it's reasonable to ask when it comes up, you know, is this is this germane to our, you know, existence? Is this germane mm -hmm. to our to the finance committee? 
to ask, you know, if there's a difference of opinion to, to sort of request a, like, maybe even a vote on if, you know, if everybody agrees that, that it, that it, you know, we need to move on or, you know, six out of seven people or five out of seven people agree that we need to move on from this topic because it's not, it's not, doesn't pertain to our main purpose. Um, you, you know, I, I, I think that might be a good way to go about it because, like I said, the reason we're having this conversation is we don't always agree that it's something that we should be spending a lot of time on. And the last part I want to say about that um, is just that part of my motivation in advocating for that, uh, like some system to kind of keep us focused on the areas we should be, is that there's a lot of work we could do that we don't get a chance to engage in because I feel that this committee sometimes gets swamped down with sort of opinions that are maybe un unrelated to, um, to our purview. And the financial indicators that you have is a great example of the type of work that we can do um, if we focus. They make out a report to the town and they have handout that they pass out, pass out to everybody, they usually put right in there after the end of each article, whoever has to vote on it, what their vote is. Now, at that point, we can either say, yes, we're going to take up and talk about the issue, or we can say, no, we don't think it's necessary, like the gender neutral language. Now, to me, it makes no difference one way or the other, but I think since the law says we should do it, we should do it. All we got to do is say, no opinion. That's all we got to say. We considered it. And we considered it. We did our job. And we don't have to say we're for it or we're against it. We can just say, no opinion, too. But I think each item, since the state law says that we should look at every issue that comes before the voters, we should do that. Whether people like what we say or not, that's another issue. I find, for example, that I think that the Finance Committee does not get all that much support at times because the selectmen run the town, yet when they want something, most times the town voters will vote with the selectmen and they will ignore the Finance Committee. It irks me a little bit because there's no sense us being there to be kind of the watchdog if they're just going to willy-nilly say, oh, yes, I want to have $16,000 so I can start another new program. Watch mosquitoes this year. I'm just telling you what I think. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> go ahead. I, I guess I'll go back and say I'm not sure that we have a choice, not only not only does the state law say it, but we've got uh, finance committee bylaw that says, I'm going to 10-5, this section is enlarged by chapter 56 of the Act of 1950, amending Massachusetts General Law, chapter 39, section 16, and that the Finance Committee shall now consider any or all municipal questions for the purpose of making reports. Recommendations to the town. I, I suppose we can say we're not interested, but that's not doing our job. No, we should say we talked about it. We discussed it. Considered it. Yeah. But it doesn't say consider. Yes, it does. It does say well, it doesn't say, you know, when it says consider, it, it means the to look at it and form an opinion. It doesn't say that. It, uh, I think it does say that. Yeah, I, I think that moves into interpretation, Skip. I, I, I don't know what it what it means, but um, it, in my opinion, it says you should consider it. But maybe it's just to consider if it has a financial impact. I mean, it doesn't. It's not clear, but I think it's. It, it seems it, it seems that you could consider it and consider whether it has any financial impact and if it does proceed and if it doesn't that's your recommendation there i think some of that is internal to the committee and 
uh, how you decide to consider things. I, I'd point I would, out that, well, you, well you, so can I just finish up? Okay. No, yeah. I'm fine. I, I would generally agree with that, except that it goes on. It says, shall now consider for the purpose of making reports and recommendations. So I think someplace along the way, we need to make some sort of a report or recommendations. We have stripped it down about as low as we can go by saying we recommend, we do not recommend. And that's something. I'd like to point out though that that same section, subsection 10.5, begins very specifically by saying that all articles calling for appropriations at any meeting shall be referred to the committee. And that seems to very specifically say that. But this was amended. The bylaws of the town were amended in 1950 to include the other section. The last so the, part of the copy of And the state law also used to say, um, my understanding is the state law also used to say that it was just the money and then it was expanded to say yes. should consider everything. The, the piece there that's jumping out to me is that it reports and recommendations. I think a report could include this, you know, language change in a bylaw has no financial impact, so the finance committee didn't spend a lot of time on it. Um, I think that is a report to the town. I didn't. I think it would be doing our our diligence. Yeah, you know. The report is, well, none of our business. There, that's a report. The, the, exactly right. Yeah, the risk of not doing that is that, you know, I want to share my opinions as a, as a citizen of Deerfield, but it isn't totally appropriate for me to get on a soapbox here. Um, I can do that elsewhere, but at the Finance Committee, because it's time and there's a, there's a focus and, you know, we're working with other committees and the select board and you know we have hearings and think there's like a lot of other things to do um, yeah there's there's good reason to stay focused oh, the, uh, you go back to the meeting that we held on September it was the 15th when we were talking with the planning board and I guess I upset one of the members of the planning board uh, and then the question, I don't know whether the question was asked by a member of the planning board, but uh, Trevor asked the question of, this is not a financial article, essentially, what he says, why are you even bothering with it? And it's like, it's that kind of discussion that I hear occasionally, which tends to... Uh, Make the suggestion to the town that this is not something that's appropriate for us to discuss. And it's like that's a decision that, at, at, at least, at, you know, I think we agree is for us to decide and not another body. Okay. Please go ahead, Jim. Um, there is also, a, there's kind of a, a historical precedent that we might want to keep in mind, and that's the, um, in the Constitution, there's the Interstate Commerce Clause, so that Congress can do, you know, this laundry list of things, including regulate interstate commerce, which turned into the basis of most congressional power, because almost everything involves, in some way, interstate commerce, even to the point that during the 1930s, they were regulating what farmers could do with their own crops, because not selling a crop would affect interstate commerce. I believe the court later struck that down, but the point is, you know, everything has a financial impact. Every everything, at least potentially, has a financial impact, and uh, we're not the town meeting. We're not the selectmen. So I think we should take a narrow focus. And I think that our commentary would have more impact if we focus our commentary on financial impact. But I totally agree that it, it's very clear statutorily we have the responsibility to consider and discuss everything, every article that goes in front of the town. 
But the question is, like, how much time do you spend on Columbus Day versus how much time do you spend on the budget, right? Yeah, I um, <coughs> don't have Columbus Day in this time. I'm sorry, you're right. Indigenous People's Day. I apologize. We do have it in the state, though, someplace. And the state hasn't recognized. States recognize a lot of towns for them. The state of Massachusetts has a state law. But they didn't change it. I really don't want to talk about Columbus Day. So, let's go back to, I, I, I'm sorry, I brought it up. I, it sounds to me like there's pretty close to consensus about about yeah. how, how it should be handled, but I think what might be helpful for me is to either explain the mechanism or create a mechanism to in, interrupt something that might be going in depth in a direction that the Finance Committee doesn't totally feel is germane. Make a motion to no. At yeah. the time we're discussing, the time you yeah. make a make a motion, but we don't. It doesn't warrant further discussion, and let the committee vote on it. And that's something I would not have been comfortable doing before this conversation. Um, so this is this is helpful. Everybody agrees okay. that that's how we do it. Then we can do it. We appear to be in violent agreement. <laughs> so, um, let's. Does anybody else have? Well, I, we I agree kind of that like basically we, we have the legal right and responsibility to do it, and we should. And if we don't want to do it, then somebody should say you're trying to absolve yourself from the responsibility of doing your job. Hey. And to me, you're either better off to say yes, we support it. No, we do not support it. But we have no opinion on it. I've seen that before too. Yeah. Me the gender neutral question. I have no opinion. That's just the way it is. It was set up by selectmen, because that's the way it was when it was set up hundreds of years ago. I have an and opinion, but I don't want to vote on it as a member of the finance committee. There we go. I'm a citizen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So are we ready for financial indicators? So we agree to disagree at times, and we're going to yeah. continue. Do we need well, a, disagreement's good. It brings out the... Um, do we need a motion or anything? Or do we I don't think... No. No, okay. Well, I think we just need to agree that, you know, we can have that conversation civilly and, yeah. and you know, press pause on a conversation if we need to without taking it. Hi, uh, Julie. Hi, it's Dan Graves. I, I'm just going back to Skip's point um, just before you head out on it. But uh, so in terms of a uh, difference of interpretation that uh, some of you are hearing from other committees, it, is there a conversation or a mechanism to, uh, to kind of enforce that this is the interpretation that the Finance Committee has and this is the expectation <laughs> on how they'll be consulted, or I, I'm just trying to make sure that the, the process leading up to the next town meeting is feels right to the finance committee and that you are consulted <laughs> and allowed to kind of make these decisions. I mean, are you feeling, are you feeling yeah. like you're not consulted or? More than not just consulted, Frequently, we're not even aware that, he, he, for example, and not necessarily this special town meeting, but at the annual town meeting, I certainly was not aware that there were a half dozen, totally, what, 10, 15 pages of zoning bylaw amendments until we got the warrant, uh, which was so we got the revised warrant. We had a meeting before that, and then somehow between our last meeting and annual town meeting, they added like five or ten pages to the thing. And, and we and to me, that, that that's expense. wrong. They should not be doing that. If they can't have the thing ready two weeks in advance, like they're supposed to, when the selectmen sign it, it shouldn't be brought forward at the last minute. That was wrong. Was that it? Was that a result of that that hearing that they discussed with us that was coming up at our previous? That was another issue. That is a problem too. 
because when you sign the warrant, you're supposed to sign the warrant, there should be a done deal at that point. So whoever has to review that thing and make a decision one way or another, you're not adding in 10, 5 or 10 or 15 pages just before the day before, and you walk into a, a town meeting and, geez, there was only 27 pages before, and now it's 42. What's going on? That was wrong. There's nobody in my mind that can justify that to me of being able to add that much information in that we haven't even looked at because we did not look at that. That was before town meeting. And that's true for the whole, I mean, it's not just finance committee, that's the whole town, right? It's supposed that's true to be too. out there two weeks in advance so that people have time to. And that's why they have a constable go out and post these things in certain places so that people can read it and they know what to expect. But how can they do that if they change the thing in between the signing and the meeting itself? I thought the rule for annual town meeting was seven days. Just seven days? Seven days, one week. And then it's two, two weeks for, um, for a special town For a special. Right. Okay. So for the warrant to be posted, there's also, <coughs> I think, something in there, and, and somebody would have to check, that the warrant closes 30 days prior to the... Right. Means all the input from all the different committees should have been finalized at that point. And, and when they wake out to three days before the town meeting to do it, it's wrong. Well, the, the, the selectman claims it's still wrong. No matter how you cut it, to, nobody can justify that. But what they do is they claim the authority to, to be able to reopen the warrant and change it and then close it. Uh, I have no idea whether that's. Julie, what, was there an answer to the question that I missed? I, I'm trying to figure out whether there's a process where we, sh where the finance committee should be telling the select board it's our interpretation consistent with mass law that we want to be consulted and be able to render an opinion on each article. Uh, and we'd like to make sure that there is a timely process for that to occur. And if you do not agree with our analysis, then that it would at least, least let the finance committee consult council, do all sorts of things. But I, I just would want to make sure that your committee feels that they're appropriately uh, provided with the information before the next meeting. So we're not talking about it after the meeting, which has been consistent. I think over the years, there's been frustration I've heard. That's an excellent point, actually. Um, so what I'm hearing, this is what I'm hearing you say, is that one of us, probably me, should go to a select board meeting and have that conversation that we've had this discussion, we've looked at um, the law, and this is our interpretation of the responsibility of the Finance Committee. You could submit it in writing. I could submit it in writing. Why not? At some point, why don't we get to, I mean, I don't always like having Board of Selectmen or the Select Board sitting over our shoulder, but I think this is something that we need to discuss with them and, okay. and get uh, a resolution. Okay. Um, before I would present anything in writing to the select board, I think that we should all see what should be presented and vote that we agree that that's the proper terminology. Um, so maybe at our next meeting, draft something, talk through it, and then either invite the select board to our next meeting to have that discussion. No, I think we should look at it first. Look at it first, and, and then, then invite them. And then invite them. Okay. <coughs> so let's put an so action item it. down. Um, I can. Somebody else wants to volunteer. For me. No. We'll see what Jim's minutes say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking it from there. Well, I'm actually not sure how much of how much detail I should go into in this because we've had a lot of discussion and I don't know whether. Um, the only thing that has to be in the minutes is any vote and who All voted. Right. All right. Well, then I'll just keep this for so my own. You can keep it. <laughs> to jog my own memory. You, you can turn yeah. it down later. Let me give you some advice the way I learned it. 
my career in public service, I learned that the shorter you keep it, the better it is. And what you do is when you want to have something, I would turn around and write the minutes for the select board when I have to do that. I just say we had a meeting about the world. And then we either voted or we didn't vote. And then we had a discussion about something else. So my minutes would be a page long, whereas other people would turn around, write 10 or 15 pages, and they put in everybody's comments. You don't need all the comments. All you got to do is say you had a discussion and what you discussed. We discussed chapter 39, section 16, and we discussed the other chapter 40, section 6. And then either there was a vote or there wasn't a vote. That's all you got to say. I think you'll have to figure out for yourself how you want to do them. Yeah, Obviously, I, I, I included more there. detail when I did them because I, you know, I, it was easier for me and also feel like well, that transparency. Everybody has their own way of doing it, and that's appropriate, too. And you and your God, Jim. Both, both you and Bruce had, the, had beautiful minutes. I could not, you know, I basically did what John had said. You know, I just, you know, we discussed such and such, and then we voted on, and then the specific the motion, motion, and then the vote. And you don't even have to say who made the motion. You just got to say a motion was made, motion was seconded, the vote was taken, the vote was 5-3. Whatever. Shall we make a motion then to submit our, this request in, to the select board? I think we want to draft it and review it first right. before we're ready to submit anything. I think we have a pretty strong consensus on yeah. this, uh, about the role, but I think we should, before we submit anything, we should see what's written. Um, so I, I don't think we need to vote on anything. We'll, um, I'll draft something before our next meeting. and. Um, We'll discuss it then. So before you go on, there's the second part that we didn't discuss yet. And it's probably the most contentious part. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Go for it. So, chapter 40, section 6. No. Oh. Chapter 39, section 16, second paragraph. Ah. Uh, where it says, in every town having a committee appointed under the authority of this section, in other words, a finance committee appointed under the authority of the section. Uh, Such committee shall submit a budget at Such the annual town meeting. Sub, yeah. Such committee shall submit a budget at the annual town meeting. So, I mean, if you, I think if you read this, uh, and Dan, I would, you know, I don't. I assume you've read this on several occasions. Um, it seems to be quite clear that it pretty much says the finance committee shall submit a budget at the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. See any other way of reading that? Yeah, can you um, just elaborate on what that means to you and and what we are doing instead? Sure. Uh, what it means, I mean, does it does it mean that I'm going to and you're going to make up a budget for each department? No. It means that each department is going to submit to the finance committee a budget. We will review that budget. We will make a recommended. We will either recommend what they asked for, or basically it's the same thing that we're doing now. It's just that. At this point in time, uh, the control of that budget is not with the finance committee. It's with the town administrator and the board of selectmen. And there are times when we don't see anything, we don't get a chance, we don't really talk about, nor do we get a chance to uh, put our stamp on Availability of funds, the use of funds, <clears throat> and I think that should be that should be within our purview, or at least a recommendation. And that's that's basically what how I. <coughs> the, the handbook. Can I talk? Yeah. Um, 
it says uh, in regards to the Board of Selectment or the Select Board, it is their job to collect budget information, develop budget priorities, and formulate a balanced budget, same as a president or a governor. Once developed, that budget is presented to the Finance Committee representing the legislative branch, the town meeting. So the Finance Committee takes it from there, does their review, and then makes a recommendation to town meeting, which you have always done. Um, so I'm just saying, I, I happened to pick that out when we were talking earlier. I, and, I, and I've seen that, and that's in the, the handbook, Finance Committee handbook. Right. It's not in state law. Right. State laws, this, I'm reading state law. Every town having a finance committee appointed under the authority of this section, such committee shall submit a budget at the annual town meeting. Same, same thing. Oh. It doesn't say the select board can't look at it first. Oh, yes, so of course they, they can look at it. Okay, it doesn't even that's say what we're doing. It doesn't even say that the finance committee shall prepare a budget. It says shall submit. Yes. What does that mean? It means submit it. It means after, you know. Hand it in. We are the ones who would be putting it into, handing it to the to the meeting. But that doesn't Correct. mean that we are the, the doesn't mean that we are the ones who have to prepare it. I mean, I think Brenda's I think example from the handbook that fits that description. Here's the budget we have. So let's, let's take Brenda's, accepted it and submitted. Let's take Brenda's department if we can. Brenda has a budget, and she presents a budget that goes to the town. We look at that budget. And we recommend we give a recommendation to the town. Right now, Brendan takes that budget, submits it, we're going to say to the town administrator, who passes it by board of select the select board. And I think there are too many fingers in the pot. That's well, all. Actually, 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 this last year it was submitted. And it has been in the past generally submitted to the finance committee first, as the select board usually has other priorities. Um, now, this last year, the finance committee reviewed it, and we came up with recommendations. But we had the select board there to help us through that process, so that we would understand what they were asking for or what was being presented, and we came to an agreement, which I think was really great. And we basically we typically do. Most of the time. So we also have times, though, where we say, can you go back and look at this? We're not, a couple years ago, we weren't comfortable with how much free cash we had left. And so we went back and talked to everybody. And we're like, can you go back and look at this and cut it down? So that was, I think, an appropriate role for the finance committee to fill. So what, what are you proposing should be done differently, Skip? I would like the budgets. And, and if, the, if there's a budget out there, you know, if somebody wants to make two copies and give one to the Finance Committee and one to the Board of Selectmen, it's fine with me. What I don't, what I, and I think that's perfectly appropriate for those departments that report to the selectmen, i.e., the schools do not report to the selectmen. And their budget does not go to the selectmen. Their budget should come directly to us. And they're the biggest, you know, the biggest item in that. Percent of our whole budget, yeah. And one of the things that we should be doing is attempting to get that budget long before March. And at least in the past, uh, before I was on this committee and then after I took over as chairman, I would typically go, when the prior chairman would typically go to the, to the school superintendent, and sit down and talk with the superintendent and, and maybe the town uh, or the school 
business manager mm -hmm. about what they were looking to do, what our financial situation was, instead of, instead of waiting until March, when at that point in time, it's a fait accompli. So I, I mean, I, that also seems like an appropriate role for the finance committee to. I, I think it is an appropriate role, or for at least, you know, one or two members of the finance committee to go talk to them. And then what do you do with, uh, I'll take two. We've got two boards that are elected. We've got uh, the assessors. The assessors. Did their budget go to the to the select board? Their independently elected board. Hmm? I don't have an opinion. I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I do. I think they've got a right to make a request to the town meeting. They've got a right to put their budget together. I don't. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I I don't have a problem with requesting that the entities that don't work that closely with the select board present their budget to the finance committee ahead of time. I think where I would take exception would be saying if we don't do that, that the select board also can't. So I just want to be clear that like I don't I don't want it to either like. I don't want to insist on on us getting it first for to the detriment of the town getting things processed timely. So I just, um, but I, I think that, I think that's reasonable. I think the finance committee should be involved in everything that is going to be in that budget. Um, and I don't know the logistics about like the school budgets. I haven't been around long enough to see, you know, when they have the information for that when they put them together. But I'm sure they start working on them early, and the finance committee. Can and should participate early. They do it much more early than they do now. Yeah, much when early. I was involved in it back several years ago, they would start talking about it in January, and the the school committee meetings for several months running would be: here's the first draft of the budget, here's the second draft of the budget, and then eventually they beat it around to the point that they felt like they could submit it. But there's the draft budgets early. Well, years ago. I'm going back a lot of years. The finance committee took the final vote on the budget. December? In December. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and um, I think that the significant change took place when Regina Nash was the. Could be wrong. Though. And also, there was a period of time when the uh, town meeting was going to be the last uh, Monday in April, or last Monday in March. I mean, I, I would like to have the school budget long before we get it now. Because there really is <laughs> nothing that we can do with, with that budget. Too detailed. Uh, in, the, in the sense of it's too late to change anything. It's too late to change the thing, and it's 70% of the town spending close to it in, budget, in those budgets. Which makes it difficult. It makes it difficult for us, but it makes it difficult for the selectmen as well. I would just like more control of the budget process. I think that's that's what we're entitled to do. That's what we should be doing. So at the beginning of the budget, people putting together the budget, somebody comes out and says, "This year, give us a budget that is level service or." level service with justification for 
specific things that need to be increased or give me a level of funded budget, which means essentially a cut. Um, who should make that statement? Select board. Select board folks do that. What do you do with the school committee? Because you know what they're going to do to the select board. They're going to ignore the select board when they want to. That's right. What, do you, what is the, the problem? Uh, is that they run their own show. They're elected independently, and they've got a right to do that. But all the committees, all the different departments that the select and run, there's, they should put out a policy statement from December or January saying level service, level this, or cut in service, or whatever. That's what should come out from the select board. But yet, the school committee does not have to follow that. And they typically don't. And they typically don't. And, and that's why, you know, I think we, this committee, is in a position to coordinate that. And I think, you know, if the, if the selectmen want to say, we need a level, you put in the words, budget, uh, question then becomes why? What is it that you're attempting to accomplish? What would you like to accomplish? And let's talk about it. I think that's the necessity is that they talk to us about what their priorities are. I, you know, I'm not sitting here trying to take away any you know, any authority from the from the board of select board. The problem that I see is that you know we end up in the middle of March, first of April, and we haven't completed the budgeting process. Well, perhaps we should request information from those school committee over other branches directly. We we'll get it though. Oh. And her dad. We used to. Like I told you. Uh, the times when I served in the school committee, uh, we put the budget together and the first part of that period we had a town meeting at the end of March. Uh, that budget was completed and signed off by the school committee uh, in December. Does the lack of getting the information from the state impact that? Because often we don't have the cherry sheets with really. us. No, and we never have. What we have always taken was whatever the most recent uh, cherry sheet request, which is you know, at this point in time, I think it's the House. Don't they go first, Brenda? What's that? Cherry sheet. The House comes first. Just does the cherry sheet first. The governor. The governor, excuse me. Governor. So we would use the governors. We always use the governors until until That's we get to the gap, that. and then we we follow what the what the final is. And by that point in time, it's July. It really doesn't didn't make a whole lot of difference. But it's also you know we don't know what we're going to have for tax dollars coming in either. We right. have to estimate that. Mm -hmm. and we estimate, and we can look at the governor's request over the past 10 years, and we can come pretty close estimating what the governor's going to propose. <clears throat> In any event. That makes a nice segue to the financial one, too. Fine. Somehow, somehow, some way, we need the school committee to get us a budget early. How do we make that happen? We can ask them for the draft. Yeah, you know, nothing. And if they don't present it, then what? Then figure out something. But my recollection is they won't. Can't give it to us if we don't ask for it. True. Down to watch. Yeah, just got to check which we come to it after we ask for it, right? <clears throat>
Um, all right. I don't, the last discussion, I felt like I knew where we all were. Now I'm a little at sea. Um, so the, the thing we would like to see changed from the way we did it last year and the year before is what? We would like to see a school, even a draft school um, budget earlier. And it, and it sounds like um, it would be nice to have a discussion or at least be informed earlier by the select board about their budget strategy that they maybe before we start getting budgets in. It would be nice to have a discussion about it. Okay. Budget strategy from the select board earlier. Budget earlier. The other one you mentioned, Skip? I think that was basically it. I mean, the assessors, I think they get to submit their budget. Uh, and we certainly can. Any boards elected? was elected. To the extent the select board agrees with your opinion, would, would a joint statement from the select board and the finance committee to the school committee on their expectations on when they'll be presented with a budget for proper consideration have some more weight? Sure. Anything the yes. select board and the sure. finance committee do together would have some weight. <laughs> I, I think what yeah. I, to me that's the underlying rub with many of the issues you're discussing tonight is is the select board and the finance committee need, need to get on the same page and they yeah. need to present that. Uh, and if there continues to be disagreement, that needs to get hammered out, whether that's with a legal opinion or whether that's however that process has to unfold. But from the person standing at the podium, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that the audience understands or appreciates the various roles, and it's okay to disagree on the underlying issue, but the process that was followed to get there, I feel, is um, not always understood. And the, you know, the the finance committee is left in the position of saying, well, we really can't give you a good opinion because we didn't get the information soon enough, and. You know, most people don't understand why that isn't happening or how that isn't happening. And um, it, it just creates a dynamic that makes it difficult for the average voter to kind of assess how they should should weigh everybody's opinions. But to the extent you can get on the same page, and if you're not, get some sound advice as to what the right answer is, and then and then expect that that's going to be you know how the town should be run because that's that's what the law says or that's what the legal opinion interprets the law to say and you kind of go from there so in our next meeting we were going to draft a statement about the role of the finance committee should we also draft something about the budgeting process and then take that to select board and try and encourage them to join us in uh, <coughs> some sort of statement on this process? I think that's a great idea and I think that if they disagree with that as reasonable, I would be really interested in that discussion also. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. either way, I think it's a good discussion to have because if it is unreasonable, like I must, I must be taught why. Um, and if it's reasonable and they agree, then great. Like let's do it that way or okay. let's try to make it happen that way. We, we have a basic process that we've used. Brenda sends out basically two, it is two, emails or memos, one that asks for capital requests in by December. Yeah, I don't do anything with the capital requests. Casey sends that out. So you know, I think you know, that's, that's certainly a budgetary item and it needs to be handled uh, as part of the budget process. 
And then someplace along the way, there's a request that goes out to the department heads for their budgets. I send that out, yes. Yeah. So, and, and uh, that's what I handle. When does that typically go out? Usually the end of November. When do you ask for the thing back? Usually the first week or second week in January. It's a little hard to get. Some, some budgets are just hard to develop before that time. So I figure if I give them to that date, I usually get most of them by then. <coughs> So and then we can start on the ones we have, and then, What's that? then we can start on the ones we have. And right. Then, well, yeah. so there's so that we're starting with a a book that's fairly complete instead of me continuing to piecemeal things together for you. For the most part, it's been pretty good except the school yeah. part. Yes. Yeah, and I think last year was the best because I think I gave them till January 15th to <clears throat> hand in budgets. We also had an extension to town meeting. We did, which was nice. Every minute or two. Um, right. So, if we asked for a draft budget from the school committee by January 15th, also. And that's that's uh, never been in my purview to get that from them. Um, right. But we I could. send it out to department heads and to the select board, but I never have been in the process or, you know, have never done that with the schools because they have their schedule. But during this discussion, maybe I should be. Or we need to meet. Meet with them. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say um, to the committee, I mean to the department, that includes that's pretty much the entire budget except the schools, right? So the assessors and the planning and the um, <coughs> scans and the sewer and everybody, everybody except capital and except the school. Except capital and school. Now, does that include the uh, wastewater treatment plant and EMS. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not the water district. They don't send us a budget anyway. Um, the one thing I'm thinking about with that school budget is a really, I don't know what it looks like for them in January, but a really incomplete budget is not very useful. But it might be good to touch base, at least, at the very least, with the school committee to get a sense of, like, big or small, or, you know, like, what kind of disaster are we looking at before we start processing all the other budgets with, you know, okay. how, how, how stringent do we need to be and critical of the other budgets? Well, I, I do think it's useful is if we were able to sit down or if there was a, it doesn't need to be the finance committee or the board of selectmen. But it needs to be somebody, uh, specifically somebody from the finance committee, chairman typically, would sit down with the superintendent and go over the financial position of the town so that they can see it. Because obviously, you know, they've got the superintendent's got four towns to worry about. Right. Deal with. Uh, but he or she should not be working in the dark. I always found that useful, and I always you know, wasn't that we always agreed, but there was, you know, the, the superintendent and the business manager were generally receptive of the, you know, so you know, I went in and said, gee, this year the town is uh, uh, looking at doing such and such and such and such, and we're going to be really tight for funds. Uh, what, what are you looking to do? What, you know, what expansion or whatever? Uh, and, and, you know, if all of a sudden the superintendent comes in and says, we've decided that all of our classes are going to be at most 15 kids to a class, so we need four teachers in every grade level. And therefore, we're going to go out and buy 10 new, you know, temporary classrooms. They're obviously not going to do that. But the point is that you don't want that to happen in in April or March. That's going to happen. You want it to happen in October or November. There's a planning for it. It's good. Okay. And it's just that communications that someplace along the way over the last few years has uh, 
cops. I'll take responsibility for the part of it since I was the chairman of the committee. Basically, since uh, Marty Barrett left. <coughs> well, okay. So, uh, can we make a motion to request the budget from the school department by the same? Whatever date we choose, the I other think, departments? I think what we have to do is find out. We passed a bylaw which gave them a certain amount of time, and I don't remember what that is. Yeah, so they have a separate cool. under cool. bylaw? Cool. I think there's a bylaw that I know of. Yeah. No, there's, there's something that we passed which allows them, I think, till March 15th or something. Because they told us that they would give it to us by March 15th. They were allowed extra time. So they're allowed extra time. I don't remember exactly where that was, but I do know that we it was voted on at town meeting and accepted. Oh, really? And this may also be something that we're dealing with the schools that we need to talk with more towns need to. Or we may not be able to get everything we're looking for this year. This whole conversation is interesting to me because I, the themes in, in all of this is that the Finance Committee feels like we need better relationships with these different entities so that we have better communication. And um, I mean, I'm like kind of a super nerd about organizations and agencies and stuff, but that's the thing we, I'm excited about because that's the thing we, we can do. Like we can, we can, you know, foster more communication and relationships with other other committees and so it might even just be a matter of reaching out and saying hey here's what we're doing and working towards like what is it like for your committee and or your board or whatever and and just get those channels open and kind of i don't know julie if you'd have time for that or we could potentially Divide and conquer. Deputize people. Yeah. yeah, divide and conquer sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I never volunteer for things normally because I have so little time too. But um, but if we're really clear about like when and how and we're organized about it, we might be able to touch base with all these different entities in a way that feels respectful and collaborative, rather than um, you know feeling adversarial, which is I think what my experience has been in the past. I think that's really exciting. <laughs> Even if it doesn't all happen in the first year, we try to just, you know, make a change. So the main groups that we've had that, that are, like, I feel like going through the budget and getting the budgets from all the departments works pretty straightforward and we get them and we talk about them and that we schedule and they come and we talk and that all works just fine. <clears throat> the pieces where we run into trouble have been school budget because we don't get it very early. So we need to talk to school superintendent probably. Planning board zoning bylaws because they're long and extensive and so we should be in touch with the planning board um, so that we know what's coming. Are there, I mean there could be changes just to other bylaws too. Generally, aren't presented as often, or as yeah. they aren't as extensive as the ones that the planning we've been seeing recently. About well, the police department, yeah, that's another big budget item. Yeah. I was going to say he usually has his budget in early. I was going to say, yeah. you, right, you can <clears throat> probably go over and talk to John now, and he can probably find it on his desk. The third thing is probably capital. Yeah. And we have a member of this committee who said, oh, we need to. We did. Yeah. yeah. We need to nominate a new CIPC person. Maybe while Dan's in off the phone? Dan left, yeah. Awesome. How do we replace, we're kind of segueing into a little bit. We need to replace Jeff Upton on the committee. <coughs> CIPC rep. I don't know the Mechanics for that. Like, we're we're doing, doing, does Dan do it? Yeah, the mechanics is that Dan appoints Dan a appoint new somebody. committee member for the finance committee. But the finance committee right. decides who yeah. right. goes on. But is Dan, 
don't know if he's still there. Yeah. Is he working on that? I think he's aware. I think they've had discussions. I'm never privy to those, but I, I think I've heard people talking about it. I'll so the ball's in motion? I believe so, yes. I would love, I don't know, if, I mean, and we may want to touch base with Dan about it later on, but I would love for the Finance Committee to be at least involved in that conversation. Um, which about recruiting and, and re, you know, recruitment of members when it's needed. Um, not necessarily that we should have, like, power in that. That's clearly a moderator appointment. But <clears throat> there could be some interesting feedback. I've never had a conversation with I, Stan. I, and, you that, you know, I don't know how much involvement you have, but in the past, it was, there was a lot of involvement by the chairman of the committee. And making recommendations to, to Dan as we got down to the dinner it's like Dan we don't have anybody uh, like if you would like some input well, well, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to ask you yeah but had him last year we had somebody um, join last fall and then she was unable to so maybe that maybe her circumstances have changed before well yeah I, I don't know anything about her but I'm I'm thinking about this and I hate to derail it so we can abandon I can just say it and you can abandon it altogether I'm open to that so don't feel like you need to engage in it <laughs> but I want to say, say it in this you know we're in a moment in the, in the world where we really need to be having conversations about diversity, equity, and, and inclusiveness, and I think that extends to the Finance Committee. Um, I know for a while being the only woman on the committee was challenging. I'm grateful to have Julie here, even though, you know, I feel like I can talk to all of the guys. I just I think there's, there's some value in that, um, and it would be nice to, to be able to communicate sort of what those experiences are and what voices might not be heard at this at these meetings because there is a you know there is a, a microphone there um, so yeah I, I would I would love to have to have at least some contact with be it with the, the chairperson or the full committee or or at least some transparency about how that process works for folks well, it's, it's, the, it's the moderator's appointment. Right. Uh, <coughs> you know, I'm sure that if you had somebody that you think would be great, you told Julie, Julie could pass that information on. Or it doesn't have to. I mean, you can call me. Welcome. Any suggestions that you know? Yeah, he would. For people to typically, uh, you know, it made sense that the chairman would uh, chair person. Chair. <laughs> the chair makes the decision. Hey, whenever somebody says they're interested in the finance committee, make out a resume and email it to Dan. What was that? He's the one who made the decision. And if but somebody's interested, they should speak up and let him know they're interested. So I guess this meeting is being recorded <laughs> and is public, so we can publicly say that there is an opening on the Finance Committee. Um, You're the boss, you can say that. We just said it, so it's out there. Yeah, when I joined Finance Committee, I actually had two years running and um, got nominated the second year. And I did exactly that. I wrote out a little resume and sent it to um, the moderator. And then I asked a couple other people to send letters of recommendation or something. <laughs> All right. Anything else we need to talk about regarding the role of finance? There's, there's one that I would, and this is not contentious at this point in time. Okay. Beth, chapter 40, section 6. <laughs> the, uh, 
uh, uh, transfer of funds from the uh, reserve fund. So I and that's it, standard practice. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was not standard practice before, and uh, um, it changed, and I I really don't know what it, why it changed. But it changed for the better. You're saying. Oh yeah. That we're good now. And I'm just saying, I think Doug Finn had a little bit of say so in that, and I think I think. <coughs> so, anyways. And all of these items, uh, I think, ought to be in the in the finance committee bylaws, bylaw, in addition to the state law, just so that they're oh, there, so that it's not. Say it. So the, the reserve fund transfer should be in there. Uh, we can we can debate or whatever the uh, exactly what the budget process is. So you think put it in the bylaw? I would put it in the bylaw. Okay. Because we also have the finance financial policies that we've started working on, although we don't have anything ready for the committee to review yet. Um, well, in there too, but policy is not law, it's policy. So you can violate it without violating law. Yeah. Um, that was a long time. But... <laughs> All right. What right, if we put that on our to-do list? Oh. Would you all clarify what is being put on the to-do list to do? <laughs> Whether we need to expand the um, town bylaws regarding finance committee role to include reserve fund and budgeting process. Primarily because those are part of state law. But to the extent Right. Not suggesting that we should put those, you know, some other things in there that aren't state law. I'm not interested in trying to take over and be a finance committee trying to take over a whole bunch of stuff. But I think the stuff that's in the state law, uh, worth have that first section that's in there. Mm -hmm. It's been in there, obviously, since. 1950. Uh, and I think I think if you look at if you haven't read finance committee bylaw, I think it's it's worth taking a look at the finance committee bylaw, and uh, particularly you got it sitting here in front of you someplace. Mm -hmm. you gave it to us. We did. It's there. Because I can't find anything with this because I never can find it. It's on the back of this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, section 10 6. Uh, read that. Uh, I have to read it now, but read it a couple of times. Actually, 10 7 is worth reading. 10 6 is sort of interesting. <clears throat> You know what that that was so big. That goes back to the school committee. Hmm? That goes back to the school committee. It does. <clears throat> the information request shall be furnished for with. It doesn't say the school committee. It says the by any committee. Yes. Department board committee. You're part of any. <laughs> What's with? Hmm. What's with? Mm hmm. What do you suppose the chances are? <laughs> All right. Anything else we need to talk about regarding the role of finance? No. 
it to death. I think we've beaten it to death. I was expecting to spend half an hour on that. We spent an hour and a half <laughs> on that. Um, I have to leave no later than 10 of, so that leaves us 20 minutes, I guess, to um, do a whirlwind tour of the um, financial indicators. I think I mentioned this before when we talked about this a while back, that um, the guts of this came from the was it DLS website. Um, they put up most of this data is available on um, available publicly on the DLS website. Um, and the links for each page are on the bottom of the page there, so you can see where the data came from. Um, Printed it, you? Did you all the printouts? No, no. Town did. I just emailed the other one and sent it out for um, Parts that I would like to discuss, but I'm not sure we have time or energy to do it tonight. Um, is the for each page in the kind of the bottom left hand part of the page, mm -hmm. there's a description of what the indicator should talk about, and then an analysis for our our data. Um, so indicator one and two. Indicator one is just receipts, um, looking at total receipts. And then indicator two, what I'd like to see us get from that is um, what we're supposed to get from it is that our net operating revenues are, you know, staying steady or slightly increasing over time, even when you take um, uh, inflation into account. Um, and then the other piece of it I'd like us to look at is this um, one time, when we dip into one time funds. So if we use that, like this past year, we used stabilization, we used the municipal building fund, and we used the uh, rent stabilization for SCEM to fund some things, which is fine because the purposes we used it for are capital, but um, I think it's something we should think about and look at each time we do it. Um, I was wondering, the last capital discussion, it struck me that a lot of the things that were being discussed as capital projects aren't really capital projects. Like sidewalks are a maintenance issue, not a capital project. And the sewers are I thought that a maintenance issue, not a capital yeah. issue. Building a new sewer would be a capital project. Maintaining the sewers that we've got should be a line every year. And the building repairs, I, I feel like... Yeah. Um, it has become a capital item because the maintenance wasn't done over time or hasn't been tracked over time. When they get so bad, then you end up replacing large chunks yes, or of whatever. The, the issues with this building. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. I have an oh, nice. Cover page. Oh, cool. Yeah. Who, um, can I ask a question on it? Yeah, absolutely. Who wrote favorable marginal? So I made that up. That's, that's, that's what you? we need to discuss. Yeah. That's you, okay. That was just me, and it needs to. That's why it, this is not. I mean, it says it doesn't say on here it should, but on the like the title of it is draft because we need to talk about those. And what I'd like to do as a group is talk about each indicator and then decide whether we think it's favorable marginal or unfavorable. Um, and, and which ones we really want to keep track of. Exactly. Right. And this is kind of long, so there may be, there probably is way more here than we want to think about. Um, do you guys want, and I'd, I'd love to take this home and look it over, take time to look it over. Good. I like okay. this. I like yes. this. Yes. Yeah. I'd love that plan because we've already been here an hour and a half and I'm going to start <laughs> talking about things. But, um, so the thought is, look at each one, look at the data that's there, and then look at the assessment and come up with an opinion. And then um, next time we meet, maybe we can do this first when and just an go opinion, through each one. Be, be a little more specific about what. It's not clear to me. Just take the first one. 
Uh -huh. uh, total receipts uh, have to be, I guess, it, let's take a look at uh, property tax revenues. Okay, good. What are you here for? How about let's look at 4A, levy limit analysis. So in my opinion, when you look at this one, we are still well, so there's the 2.5% the hard limit above which you cannot tax, right? And we're at like 15 or, right? We're at what? We're at 15.85. And we can go up to 25, right? So we're nowhere near the hard limit, and we're not going to hit the hard limit anytime sure. soon unless we do something nuts, right? So we're fine. But if you look at the trend over the past 10 years, 10 years ago, we had 50% of that override limit available, and now we have 40% of that override limit. So our taxes are creeping up, and we're creeping up towards that limit. Um, so in my opinion, it's marginal because we're showing this trend of increasing our taxes over time and that we're, we're, we're chewing away at that levy limit space that's available. Mm -hmm. Somebody else's opinion may differ from that. Um, in which case, I think we should, as a team, decide what our opinion is that's what I mean by opinion. Okay. And this one's arguable. I mean, you could sit there and say, well, yeah, we're, you know, we're at 16 and we have the 25, we're fine. Right. Who cares? Think of all we could do with all that other. Yeah. yeah. Or we could say, you know, whatever. Um, could we, do you think it would be reasonable to plan for our next meeting since there's a lot here and I'm a little concerned about, like, having meaningful discussion about all these if we all read these? all of them and maybe focus on what jumps out to us at different ones. Maybe this is just a proposal, but it depends on how in-depth we want to go with these. Uh, we, I guess we could either look at all of them and see what jumps out at us, and then when we come to the Finance Committee meeting, discuss whichever ones jumped out, or <coughs> we can pick the first third or something okay. and focus on those and talk about each one in, in depth. I'm just sort of leaning towards the first way because I'm afraid I'm going to notice, I'm going to like hyper focus on something interesting, on something that everybody else finds mundane, and then I'm not telling you. Are you saying we should divvy it up and like each one of us should take one of these and present it to the group and I, discuss it? I think what I'd like saying? to know if our next meeting we're going to try to cover all of them in, you know, or if, in or if we shallow, should, yeah, or, or if we should deliberately limit ourselves. Right, to because oh, okay. that way we're talking uh, about the same thing and we're all okay. well informed. So especially given the meeting. tendency to spend yeah. half the time on the first article and then Thank half you, the yeah. remaining time on the second article. And yeah, so maybe three if you want. Okay, through them and just so we've all read the same thing before the meeting. Okay. So what if we take. <laughs> um, Maybe we should just take a minute and decide which ones are really important. Yeah. Okay. And those decide which of those we want to So look I at. think the note. debt things are important now because of the discussions that the town wants to have about that if we decide that this is yeah, now the borrowing thing, all the new stuff. Yeah. Cool. So do we want to start with saying numbers? Nine, ten, and eleven. That sounds fun. Well, we're make it nine through twelve. Nine through twelve. Nine through twelve. It is. We, if we receive the uh, population figures from the yes, like five thousand ninety. <coughs> so we 90. have the, the right. total number. That. We have the total number, but I haven't seen the age breakdown yet. Oh. That's the piece I really want to see. But the yeah. total number is it's 5090. Yeah. Our 2020 number. One thing that you can predict people are getting older. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't noticed.
America. <laughs> So we're going to do 9 through right. 12? We're going to do 9 through 12 next time we meet. When do we want to meet again? You're the chairman. Not everything, but um, right, yeah. I think so. Well, next week you're meeting for the library. For the library. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I have a text from Chloe who was sitting in on our meeting saying that she might be interested in participating on the finance committee, but she doesn't think we could hear her, which we couldn't. Oh, great. She's muted. Oh, she's still she's here. She's muted. You're she's muted. She's still here. Yeah. Can you oh, hear me now? Hello. Oh, I think I didn't, maybe I didn't unmute before. I apologize for that. Yep. That's marvelous. Yeah. <laughs> You can so tell me more about it later. Well, yeah. Does she need to contact Ann Graves if she's interested, or how is that? Yep. That would be the process. So, um, oh, I get, she's my neighbor, actually. Um, yeah. Give me a shout later, and I think what the, the appropriate process would be to write up a little resume about sort of why you want to be on the Finance Committee or what background you have or something and um, send that to Dan Graves, who's the moderator, and he's responsible for appointing people. Um, and then I would be happy to send a, um, an email to Dan also with support okay. for that. That'd be great. That sounds good. We'll do that. Put, I'm putting up video so you can see who I am. Hello. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> great. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too, Chloe. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It would be nice to have somebody under 70 here. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of us. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> All right. Um, so scheduling was this week. Okay. Two weeks would be the 27th. Where are you going? Uh, I'm kind of committed to something. Your banker's out? Yeah. Your banker's here? I'm kind of committed to something. On the 27th, yeah. On the 27th I can't of October. Okay. Um, okay, so into November. But I'm three other days. Good. Good for you. I like oh, that. Just that day, though. Right. Yeah. Um, I suppose I should get my calendar. Or you look at the webinar I signed up. Maybe the I last week, week in October. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have to. Are we looking for what? <laughs> like maybe the last week in October. I didn't hear if you were. Yeah, maybe. Dates yet. That's um, two weeks from tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Except that night doesn't work for. No. Yeah, the Wednesday doesn't work for me and for Jim. It can be Tuesday or Thursday or Friday or Monday. Okay, so the 26th. Uh, I have another meeting on the 26th. And the 28th is one of those ATFC thingies. But November 2nd. I will be on vacation for the first two weeks of November, mm -hmm. but I won't begrudge you if you meet without me. All right, let's go back to the first, the last <laughs> week and after this. Um, does the 26th work for everybody else? I can do the 26th. Okay. 26th? That works? That works for you, Jen? Tuesday. Tuesday the 26th. 5 o'clock? Yes, 6 o'clock. I, I can do any time. Me too. Does a little later work better for you to get um, here? It's a, I have a, I'll have an evening meeting Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday that week, so yeah. I would say earlier is better so I can sleep. 5 o'clock. Yeah. Um, 10, 26, 5 o'clock. Those are, those are Skip, rough ones. Skip, does October 26th work for you? Tuesday? I think it's pretty tough. He went to the uh, well, he went to the room. Right. I'm not going to holler at him in the bathroom. I thought he was back there for some reason. All right. We'll tentatively say that. October 26th at 5. Need a motion? Okay. Oh, we, we can move to okay. agenda. Oh, Somebody will have to do an agenda, right? I don't know what that's those. I'll do that. Okay. Does that. That's her responsibility. Chairperson. Uh, all right. Um, is there anything else? 
Okay, and we will look at items 9 through 12, and we will also look at, that will be the first item on the agenda, so we finally talk about this. And the second item will be draft um, statement of goal. I have a... I need... Oh, go ahead. You know, you were speaking first. Not a lot, John. All right. <laughs> I, I, we get the monthly financials from Brenda. Yes. And we never do anything with them. Yeah. We should talk about it. Yeah, we should. I think we should look at them all and make it part the of meetings. part of the meetings. Okay. My opinion. We have to at yeah, least to do a review <laughs> together review. I was just going to assuming this one ready. I'm not. I'm not. Don't yeah, want to. Uh, um, don't want to create. Oh, you got to get it done for our meeting. Right. One That's on, not the, my on the twenty. I wouldn't have October ready, but oh, we, we can have September. September. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever's available, I guess. Yeah. In fact, the most recent available. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just going to mention that I, it seems like we are on track to meet more regularly in the, when it's not budget season, and I just mm -hmm. want to be thoughtful about informing Brenda if there are meetings she does not need to attend. <laughs> right. um, so that she does, I mean, I, if you need to be there, I like want tonight. to ask you, but. <laughs> yeah, tonight I, I, it, yeah. it wasn't that important for me to be here, but I, I did I did want to hear the discussion and thought that uh, that was okay. As far as I'm concerned, you're always have added value to the yes. finance committee, <laughs> but I also know that like, you know, know, you're an employee and not a volunteer, and um, and I want to, you know, Thank you. I want to be thoughtful about yeah, that. I appreciate that. <laughs> and that way we know we can demand your presence when we really need it. <laughs> well, unfortunately, for the financial indicator stuff, assuming we actually talk about it, it would be very yeah, helpful to have you there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry we didn't get to it. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. So the 26th at 5, we're meeting again. Can we do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What day is the 26th? It's a Tuesday. 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 It would be nice. I mean, I always like meeting on Tuesdays. I don't know. Uh, not that it matters okay. Wednesdays, but having a set date for meetings. Yeah, always, yeah. It makes it a little bit easier to plan so that, you know, if you look out, it's like, okay, Thursday, three weeks from now. Yeah, I've got something that I, I can plug something in there and know that that's not going to interfere with. Does the most part Tuesday evenings work for people? I have fine. a monthly Tuesday meeting, so every second Tuesday I'm not available. <laughs> every second Tuesday? Every second Tuesday is not an option for me, but other than that, Tuesdays generally work. <laughs> right. We'll meet October 26th at 5 p.m. We'll talk about financial statements, financial indicators, and a draft statement of the role of the finance committee. Okay. The financial statements that come out, how are we going to get those? I'm sending them to you electronically. And there, is that what's I don't want to wait. throw one in my box? Seth? Can you throw one in my box a couple of days? I can throw one in your box. Because I reject the idea of just sending out everything electronically. Because I remember the first time that they said, oh, well, we got the new manual for the Board of Health. And since you're a selectman, you've got to read this Board of Health manual. And it would take that many pages. You know something? I'm a volunteer here. When you got to pay a hundred and something dollars for the print to put it out. And then I buy paper, buy the case. <laughs> And it still wasn't enough. All right. I actually really, really, really need to go. Okay. Anybody want to move? I move that we adjourn. Second. I'll make a motion. Second. <laughs> second. Sorry, this is the second. Sorry. <laughs> no, we have to vote. All in favor, aye. 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 Yeah. You take a roll call? I think it's all of us. John Pachork, aye. It was unanimous. We don't need a roll call. Julie Chalpin, aye. Alison Vanderbilt, aye. You said you need a roll okay. call because that's Bumped their up. policy. There you go. Roll call done. We are adjourned at 6.46 p.m. Thanks, Julie, for everything.